Hey, all right. How's it going? Welcome back. Another great week. Thank you for being here. Um, I rearranged my setup yet again. Um, I don't know if anybody else does that, but I feel like change is always inspiring and I like this setup though. I really do. It fits in the camera nicely, sort of. I mean, sorry to cut off this side. I know you can't see the slider, um, but you can see the screen. So hopefully you can read that and kind of follow along with what's going on. Um, this week, Super Booth was cool, huh? Everybody watched that coverage. There was some good coverage from Sonic State. Bo Beats did some cool stuff. Um, in my opinion, everything was fairly priced, and <laughs> that's it. Um, yeah, it was cool. Also, um, I just want to throw out there, uh, Super Booth is great, and that art, music, and technology, uh, the podcast that I mentioned a couple sh uh, walk and talks ago, um, it is coming to an end, unfortunately. Darwin Gross um, put out a little announcement, and I just we're gonna put a link down below. You should check all that stuff out. It was there were some really good talks with some really good people, and uh, yeah, I feel um, I hope that I wish him well, and I look forward to more from him in the future. I hope that um, there's more chats and stuff. I'd like to hear. I, I like where his head's at. Um, so today uh, I have a lot to talk about, so I'm talking fast. This is like take five. Not really, but sorta. Um, I have connected here the Lyra coming from channel five here um, into three, which is going to C of the Octa track. So it's basically one, two, three, four, A, B, C, D. And then five is the Lyra, and six is just a random thing that right now I have plugged into a tape machine. Uh, so I could bring the tape in later, maybe. Uh, so right now I have birds playing on this static. The hardest part for me was deciding how I want to set up my parts. Um, so I think I'm going to have every part be basically the same. Maybe I'll swap out a uh, through track for a pickup machine. But right now I have four flex machines on the left, each one assigned to its own recording buffer for this part. And other parts I will have them assigned to five, six, seven, eight. And then do some, I think I'll have these dedicated to kind of faster, um, pick up loops that kind of throw back quick that are always red trigs if you know what I'm saying and I'm gonna have the left uh, the one through four be more like um, one shot trick recording buffers that are long term and I kind of keep them in the buffer for a while and then five through eight can be manipulated quickly and um, but they're all gonna be played through the flex machines on the left and then I will have uh, let's see the through machines on five and six a B and then C and D right now it's just C that could be changed as well. And then I just like having one static machine for some birds playing underneath, so I can drop that out. But I love the mindset it puts me in, um, calms me down. And yeah, then with the MIDI tracks, I have uh, 10, 11, 12, and 13 here. And then I have another set of 10, 11, 12, and 13 on the right. So if I wanted to just kind of flip between a couple patterns per channel, um, yeah, so the live right here can come on through. My playing idea was that with these recording buffer channels, I could record whatever I want. I could record the throughs. I could also play slots. I like the idea of um, being able to play these one shots. So I, I put a bunch of one shot tricks. Um, some a little longer than others, but I, I like the idea of being able to play odd sounds on the fly and just kind of throwing things in there. Um, example here. I can do that and then this is set to record um, itself and also um, input C so if I cue that up that'll record just this drone sound I think <laughs> nope not yet it would help if I had a trick down I thought I did there we go
I believe that recording was from earlier to be honest, so I'm gonna go ahead and re-record Just so you can see that I'm not bluffing you because nobody you didn't see that plus sign there So you know that hey that was already in there, so I'm gonna re-record it Just so that you know all is right in the world And now it's not gonna play it of course. Oh, that's because of the pitch so it's gonna go around one more time and then it's gonna, I don't know, it's just a quirk. No, it's not. Why am I wrong all the time? Cause that's still one shot, goofball. There you go. Change that from one shot to a red. There we go, make sure that was in the right spot. Cool. So now that I have that, I can also play this chromatically. Cool, whatever. I could play in I could play chromatically if I wanted to do something like that. That's all I wanted to represent there. Let me bring in one more of these little uh, slot tracks that I kind of put something in. And really blow your ears out. So Sean, what the heck are you doing? I don't know. What the heck are you doing, Sean? So basically what I wanted to demonstrate, bring it all down. I wanted to demonstrate what I want to build. This is kind of a really rough take. This doesn't sound that great, but I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna keep moving on because I showed you that. All right, I wanna play slots. I wanna have through tracks being recorded as all people do. I just wanna show how I wanna do it. There's so many track, there's so many videos about the Octa track that it is, a bit overwhelming, so I understand if this is not your, um, I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, delay and whatnot to the live ride. Put the vibrato on. There we go. Bring the volume down a little bit. Bring the birds down a little bit. And I wanna talk to you. I have a little heart to heart. Um, so yeah, with the uh, MIDI tracks being sent out here, this is where the cool stuff happens, all right? I'm excited because I had to put all that out there just so I can get to this. I have these LFOs being sent to um, the MIDI to CV and I'm gonna connect those to the filters. Let's see here. So, like I said, 10, 11, 12, 13. So right now I am over here on the snare drum channel. Does not matter what channel, honestly. I just did this to keep it organized. But on the snare drum channel, I have the CC1 being modulated um, by an LFO, a random LFO wave going very fast. And that is assigned over here to MIDI 3. And I assigned it earlier. I don't want to do it right now because everything's running. Um, take my word for it. And I'm going to connect it to the filter of the hi-hat. It is going very fast. And now I do have trigs being sent to the hi-hat. But what I want to do is connect noise instead in order to have a steady flow of current. And I'm going to bring that volume up. Cool. And now I'm going to run the same one through an inverter, the same LFO, random LFO through an inverter. I don't know if it needs to but I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna send that to the snare drum. And I'm gonna connect the snare drum also to the noise. And I connected that to the out for some reason, wrong. I, I connected now the snare, <laughs> yeah, there you go, snare drum filter to the inverted LFO signal. Don't know why I connected it to the out. Quick move. So if I had the snare drum tuned all the way up here, it sounds like this, okay? If I bring the tune, because the mix knob is all the way to the right here, all the way clockwise, if I bring the tune all the way down, you get those crackles. There you go, so 
some crackles there. I'm gonna bring the volume down and I'm gonna try to uh, get some get some clean tape. Be very careful. Keep the volume down if you're doing this, because you could blow the ears out of somebody. You get some cool, cool. I can open the release on it too, maybe a little more out of there. But I like I like noise because if you tighten the release on it, you get more crackles out of it and stuff. But all right, cool. I'm leaving it. Don't mess with it. All right, and I can do the same thing with this side as well. Volume down on that. And what's kind of cool? You know, I'm not gonna do that. I want to keep this one kind of crazy, and I want to demonstrate how A and B will work. I've done this in a lot of videos, so I hope it's not too tedious for those who have watched in other. Um, but it's kind of cool that I can connect um, like one to one side. Let's see, that's gonna blow yours out. Right here, I don't want to blow yours out. And then I'll connect this one to the left. And let's just see what that's all about. Kind of cool. Kind of cool. Let's see if I do. And now let's see how that sounds. So it's kind of a weird effect. Two different things going on, but they kind of sound similar. How about some reverb? I hope my head hasn't been in the way this whole time. New setup. Anyway. There's that, and then I have the bass module being affected by an arpeggiator again. Um, I have D sharp, F, G, and C sharp being sent to the arpeggiator and uh, to the module. And here is what that sounds like. So I have one trigger down. The pattern is for this uh, track is 16. Bring the volume down on these a little bit. I'm gonna bring these down here. So I just have the reverb up here. And then I have the clean one here. Right. Probably wanna connect the reverb to that anyway. What I would like to do, I could run reverb up through the three track here too. I don't know what I'm doing, but I just wanna keep it separated a little bit. Um where was I? MIDI track, 11, sent to the bass. It's this arpeggiated um, little line here, the D to C sharp here. And what is happening is the LFO is modulating on this one how long uh, this note is gonna be. So I have it set to hold, so every time it hits, it's a different length, um, and it holds that length. And yeah, so basically the arpeggiator um, is, the arpeggiation is a certain length. Um, I hope you can hear that all right. hope it's not too quiet. Anyway, cool. So with that arpeggiation, I found that it was kind of cool also if you switch this, uh, the module to percussion mode. Gives it kind of a crazy, like old school digital sound. When it's higher in frequency. Let's see how we get. It's a C 
city. <laughs> All right, let's add some kick to this mess. Alright, so that's all I wanted to show you today. Um, jumbled mess. Working way too fast, but I hope it makes sense. Check out our music technology podcast. It's awesome. I am not a, um, yeah, I'm not a professional. I should probably put that out there. Um, I really appreciate y'all being here, but I don't gig out. I need to gig out. I'm in Southwest Michigan. If anybody wants to play music, I would love to make music, but it takes me a while to get there. You see what I'm saying? I'm trying to figure out how I want to present it. But I can noodle all day long. Um, anyway, that's basically all I got. I hope you have a great week. Hope this finds you well. Takes your mind off things for a little bit. Play some music. Have an awesome week. Thanks for being here.